Hey, Whitney. I'm so sorry I couldn't make it to Isabel's party yesterday. In fact, I was so busy running errands to go shopping and buy new things for Antonio to prepare for his first day of elementary school. It's an important thing to do, you know. My precious grandson has gone to school, so there are a lot of things to worry about. I hope you didn't take offense. Just know that I care about your daughter just as much as I care about anyone else in her family. It's okay. You already made it clear to me yesterday. After all, Antonio has quite a big day ahead of him. So it's understandable that you want him to be fully prepared for it. That's right. <laughs> I'm so glad you understand. I was so afraid that you would think I'm a bad mother-in-law and a bad grandmother to Isabel, which would definitely tarnish my image in others' eyes. Honestly, I feel an immense sense of guilt for not being able to join Isabel's celebration this time. Please don't take it too personally and forgive me, your dear mother-in-law. I don't take it personally. However, you should have informed me or anyone else about your absence in advance before Isabel's birthday party started. Everyone was really worried about you. We tried to contact you, but your line seemed to be busy the whole time. Your husband and daughter were so worried about you and Antonio that they had to abandon the party and go out there to search for you. Luisa even thought that her son was kidnapped. We were about to call the police until you finally returned our call and said to me that you were at a restaurant eating out with Antonio. Oh, how absent-minded of me. I planned to call you and talk about it, but it completely slipped my mind. My, my. It must be my age taking its toll on me. My bad, dear. I hope you wouldn't think any less of me for not being able to attend Isabel's birthday party. I promise I'll be able to make it to her next party. You have my words. Well, it's a shame. I remember you couldn't attend Isabel's previous birthday parties either, for the last two or three times. That's absolutely right. I have a lot going on every day and most of my plans are already paid for. I have commitments such as my dance classes, golf lessons, yoga, and spa appointments. It would be unfortunate to waste the money I've invested by canceling any of them just to attend your daughter's birthday. Please understand that I don't mean to offend you in any way, but your daughter will have numerous birthday parties as she grows up, won't she? On the other hand, my remaining time in life is limited, so I must live each day to the fullest. Don't you agree? All right, I understand. You have an incredibly hectic schedule. Just like the countless times you previously mentioned when you weren't able to attend my daughter's birthday party. <laughs> Excuse me, I hope you're not holding a grudge against me, are you? That would be quite immature of you, to be honest. After all, Antonio has been experiencing a lot of trauma ever since his parents got divorced. Poor boy. It's heartbreaking to see how lonely he must feel after his father left. It's only natural that I dedicate more of my time to caring for my precious grandson, Antonio. Don't you agree? <sighs> I understand. Antonio is really lucky to have a thoughtful grandmother like you, Natalie. I know Luisa was also deeply hurt when she had to part ways with her husband. I hope she'll be able to regain her strength soon and find happiness in life again. Anyways, I know I haven't been able to attend all of Isabel's birthday parties, but I've always made sure to send her a gift. Have you heard if she liked the gift I sent her yesterday? I bet she did. I mean... Come on. Incredibly practical for her. I've learned a lot about what she likes over the years, so I'm confident I made the right choice this time. It's what they call grandmother's instinct, you know? Um, thank you for buying Isabel patient clothing. She tried it on, and it fits quite well. But can I be completely honest with you? What? Just be honest with me, honey. But don't tell me that Isabel didn't like my gift, because I'd be really sad to hear that from you. Well... I appreciate your kindness, but I don't think she'll have a need for it. Normally, hospital provides such attire for inpatients, so there's no need for them to bring their own. Besides, I can't quite understand the meaning behind the gift. Is there any chance that you want Isabel to be hospitalized? Oh dear, don't get me wrong. Of course I'd never want Isabel to be hospitalized, but we have to face the ugly truth. She's not as healthy as other kids and she will never be. She's been struggling with asthma since she was barely five years old. I feel so sorry for her. I just hope she can lead a happy and thriving life like other kids her age. But I doubt it'll be the case. Natalie, what do you mean? Of course, it's unfortunate that Isabel has asthma. But overall, she's just like any other kid. She always does her best to exercise and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Is that why you gave Isabel patient attire? You think my daughter is so sick that she needs to be hospitalized? Exactly. 
Thank you, dear, for having such a quick grasp of my intention. We all know that Isabel will be in and out of the hospital for a long time to come, and of course she'll need to use the clothes I bought for her. My gift may not be as fancy as the others, but it's definitely the most useful one. Of course, most hospitals will lend patient attire, but think about it. They're probably filthy as millions of people have worn them before your daughter. See how meaningful I am? I'm a mother myself, so being considerate is in my nature. I'm sorry, but I gotta be honest here. I don't really appreciate that kind of assumption. It seems like there might be a hint of bias or prejudice against my daughter in your attitude, and it's really bothering me. Excuse me? How dare you accuse me of having prejudice against your daughter? You're making me seem like some kind of terrible, vile witch! Is this the right way for a daughter-in-law to think of her mother-in-law? I'm profoundly disappointed in you, Whitney. I thought you were better than to accuse me of prejudice. But no, you're just another daughter-in-law who has serious discrimination against her mother-in-law. I guess it's some kind of trend these days for daughter-in-laws to treat their mother-in-laws like trash, huh? Nathalie, hold up. Let's not blow this out of proportion. I was simply expressing my concerns based on the facts, and it had nothing to do with any kind of discrimination against you. By the way, do you remember the last few times you sent my daughter birthday and Christmas gifts? Honestly, most of them were things she couldn't use because they had a high chance of triggering her asthma, like scented candles, perfume, or indoor plants that release pollen. And remember that one time you got her an American bobtail cat? Well, that's one of the cat breeds that sheds the most. Thankfully, one of my friends stepped in and adopted the cat, otherwise, it would have ended up in a shelter. Are you seriously accusing me of blaming you for giving gifts to my granddaughter? All I wanted was to be a loving and responsible grandmother. But I see now that nothing I do will ever be sufficient for you, right? Your prejudice against me is clear, so don't even bother denying it. You clearly hate the gifts I've given Isabel, don't you? Fine. Starting now, I won't give her anything at all. And don't even think about inviting me to her birthday parties because I won't be attending. Whitney, are you there? I have great news to share with you about Antonio. Louise's son, he's about to graduate elementary school. Can you believe it? Do you even realize how fast time has gone by? I know, I can't believe it myself either. Antonio has grown up so fast that I can barely recognize him anymore. He's proving to be a grandson that any grandparent would want to have. Oh, hi Natalie. Luis already told me about Antonio's graduation. Congrats to Antonio! I'm so happy for him. Time really flies by. It's hard to believe that Antonio is old enough to graduate elementary school. <laughs> well, Whitney, it's been quite some time since our last conversation, and I genuinely hope that you and your daughter are doing well. Look. I gotta own up to something. I said some stuff about Isabel that I really shouldn't have and I'm really sorry about it. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive this old lady for her slip up. Let's put it behind us and move forward. Sounds good? By the way, how are you and your daughter? Are both of you still doing well? Isabel and I are still doing well. She's now in secondary school and enjoying every bit of it, especially being around friends. That's what school should be all about, you know? Oh, she's still going to school. That's great to hear. Honestly, I had no idea about that. I thought she was doing homeschooling or something, considering how she always appears sick and tired. Poor little girl. Wait, hold on a second. Natalie, what do you mean by saying Isabel always looks sick and tired? I'm a bit confused here. Can you elaborate? Uh, why are you having trouble understanding this? When I visited your place last time, Isabel didn't seem to be in good shape at all. Are you sure she's eating well and getting enough sleep? I mean, she looks so tired and drained with those bags under her eyes. That's not a healthy sight for a kid, you know. Tisk tisk. You should really be more attentive to your daughter's well-being. What exactly are you implying here, Natalie? I assure you, I pay excellent attention to my daughter's well-being. I don't know whose kid you were describing as sick and tired earlier, but it definitely doesn't sound like my daughter at all. Isabel is still bursting with life and energy, just like she has always been. In fact, she's been involved in a bunch of activities like swimming and cycling, and her health has never been better. Swimming and cycling? Are you sure that a chronic asthmatic patient like her can handle all that? If I have to be honest, I'm really worried about Isabel. She's just a little girl. You shouldn't be pushing her to do things that are completely beyond her capabilities. No need to worry. She's perfectly capable of swimming and cycling. In fact, 
It's the doctors who actually advised me to encourage Isabel to participate in these activities. Oh, darling, I'm afraid you're overexerting your own daughter. And that's not what parents should do to their children at all. According to my experience, people with chronic asthma need to be confined to a separate room with a curtain shut all the time to avoid sunlight. In an ideal world, you should lock her in a room to prevent her from going outside as much as possible. Um, Natalie, I have to be honest here. It seems like you're taking things to an extreme level. Finding a balance and taking precautions is important, but locking Isabel in her room all the time to prevent her from going outside seems a bit overboard. I mean, sure, Isabel has asthma, but I've never heard of anyone suggesting to lock asthmatic people in a room like that. Honestly, you're taking about Isabel like she's some kind of criminal or something. Whitney, I promise I just want what's best for Isabel. She's my granddaughter after all. As grandma, I feel a responsibility to make sure she's okay. So if I ever think you're not parenting her the right way, I'm gonna step in. I'm not sure what's going on with Isabel, but she looked pretty rough the last time I saw her. Are you sure you're doing the right thing by letting Isabel go outside for too long? I'm starting to worry about you as a parent, I really am. I get it, you genuinely want what's best for Isabel, but isn't it a bit too much? I don't think keeping her cooped up at home all day will actually help improve her condition. Plus, she'll be really bummed out if she can't hang out with her friends. Socializing is important for her happiness too, you know? I can't believe you keep brushing off what your mother-in-law is saying like that. Do you even realize how awful the air pollution is these days? Like seriously, it's terrible. If Isabel even sets foot outside, she'll be exposed to countless asthma triggers that you can't even see with the naked eye. It could seriously endanger her life, you know. Do you seriously want something like that to happen to your own daughter? But, Natalie, tons of people with asthma go outside all the time, you know? Oh, say no more, Whitney. I totally get what you're implying. Look, I know you want Isabel to come off as tough to keep up with Antonio, but honestly, it's not working. You don't have to push so hard, really. I mean, even if Isabel gives it her all, she'll never match up to Antonio's accomplishments. So why force her into stuff that just isn't her thing? Don't you agree? What are you even saying? Why would I want Isabel to be all tough just to compete with Antonio? That doesn't make any sense at all. Antonio is my nephew, and I'm genuinely stoked about everything he's accomplished so far. I seriously don't get why you're acting like there's some sort of rivalry going on between Isabel and Antonio. Where's that even coming from? Oh, you haven't heard about Antonio's epic accomplishments at school? All right, buckle up because I'm about to give you the lowdown on his elementary school journey. This kid was on fire. He snagged those student of the month awards like nobody's business, rocked the perfect attendance scene, got recognized on the honor roll, collected certificates of achievement left and right, and even got his hands on the principal's award. Oh, and let's not forget about his insane collection of sports medals. My precious grandson is a natural born athlete, I'm telling you. I'm pretty sure he got all those awesome jeans from me and my hubby. I mean, just look at how flawless my grandchild is. He's like every kid's dream come true, no doubt about it. Oh, that. Yeah, I'm already in the loop, thanks to Louisa. She told me all about Antonio's achievements, and it's great to hear it. I know Louisa is really proud of her son. So, how are you feeling about it? I get that you might be a bit bummed out, but hey, it's all good. I mean, not every kid is meant to achieve greatness like Antonio, you know. It's just how things roll sometimes. Well, like I've just said to you, I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on from that topic. I could seriously talk forever about Antonio's endless list of achievements, but we'd be here for days. Listen up. Whitney, my dear, we're throwing a Christmas dinner bash at my place and everyone's gotta be there. I really hope you and my son can make it and join in on the fun. And of course we can't forget about my little angel, Isabel. I have a feeling it's gonna be an awesome family gathering with lots of good vibes and great food. Are you really cool with us showing up? Cause let's be real, the last few Christmas shindigs at your place weren't exactly the warmest welcome we've ever received. Honestly, if I gotta be straight with you, your behavior towards my daughter left a lot to be desired. It kind of felt like you weren't exactly thrilled about Isabel being around, you know? Look, Natalie, if you're not feeling it, no need to force yourself. We're totally fine skipping out on the get-together. No hard feelings, seriously. <gasps> what did you just say, Whitney? Are you suggesting that I'm some kind of 
monster who hates her own granddaughter? <gasps> That's a low blow, young lady. I gotta say, you really managed to hit me right in the feels with that one. You've hurt my feelings, uh, my dignity, and my self-respect. And I can't help but wonder if trashing your own mother-in-law is like your go-to hobby or something. Is that what you enjoy doing in your free time? Whoa, whoa. You've got it all wrong. That's not what I was trying to say at all. I just don't want to make things tough and awkward for you. That's all I meant, seriously. Say no more, young lady. I can totally picture what you'd be telling everyone about me. It'd probably be something like, Oh, you know my evil mother-in-law, Natalie. She totally despises my daughter because she thinks my daughter's a total failure. Ugh, man, I can't believe it. This is beyond anything I could have ever imagined. I never thought in a million years that you would go so low and do something like this to your innocent and unsuspecting mother-in-law. Natalie, seriously, can you not jump to conclusions about what I might say? I never went around spreading stuff like that about you. I'm not the type to gossip and badmouth people, you know. Then why did you even bring up the idea of skipping our family's Christmas get-together? That's just plain rude, you know. I can't help but wonder what others would think of me. My friends, neighbors, colleagues, and even my own family. They'll probably see me as some kind of mother-in-law who enjoys bullying her daughter-in-law and granddaughter and deliberately excluding them from important family events. And imagine if rumors start spreading. My reputation would be ruined and I'd be avoided wherever I go. Do you really want that to happen to your innocent mother-in-law? I don't think it's such a big deal, really. Everyone will get it, you know? Plus, my husband and I don't want to cause you any trouble by coming over if you secretly don't want us there. Honestly, I'm just looking out for you and what's best for you. I know. Are you seriously trying to scheme against me, spreading fake rumors and making everyone hate me? I can't believe that you would even think of something so cruel. I must be the unluckiest mother out there. I have only one son and he goes and marries a woman who seems to have no problem hurting her own mother-in-law. <laughs> Somebody call an ambulance or something. I think my blood pressure is skyrocketing after discovering my daughter-in-law's true evil intentions against me. Seriously? What can I even do to make you happy? I'm throwing in a towel here. Just spill it out already. Tell me what you want. Oh, sweetheart, it's really not that hard, you know. Just come along to the Christmas get-together with me and everyone else and voila! All our issues will be sorted. Simple as pie. I'm sure you'll want to clear up all the misunderstandings between us and start fresh, right? Come on. I bet Isabel is dying this year, Grandma. Think about it. It'd be such a shame for a child to grow up without the love of their dear grandma, don't you think? Well, I guess you do kind of have a point there. No doubt about it. Come on, quit pouting like a little kid about something that happened ages ago and just join the Christmas bash with the rest of the family, all right? All right, fine. I'll do it. But you better make an effort to be nicer when my daughter is around too. She's just a little girl, you know, and she really admires you as her grandma. Of course I will. You've got my word. I'm so excited to have you and your family over at my place for dinner on Christmas night. It's going to be one of the happiest days of my life, no doubt about it. Where are you, Whitney? It's getting pretty late, you know. I clearly told you to show up around 5 in the afternoon to help me and my daughter get ready for dinner, but you didn't even bother to lift a finger. What's with the attitude? Listen up. Everyone's waiting for you and your family, so quit dawdling and get your butt over here. Dinner is about to start for real. Oh, Natalie, I was gonna text you. I'm sorry, but my family and I won't be able to make it to the Christmas shindig. So you go ahead and enjoy the dinner. Me and my husband decided to take Isabel out to eat at the restaurant instead. Did I just hear you right? You're seriously gonna ditch your mother-in-law like that? That's just downright awful, you know. Do you even have a clue how much effort I put into preparing everything? Oh, you mean the time you dedicated to executing your wicked plan to harm my daughter? You're like the embodiment of pure evil, Natalie. Right from the beginning, I had a gut feeling that you were up to something shady, and I was totally right. What on earth are you blabbering about? Evil plan? Did you smack your head somewhere and lose your marbles or something? Why don't you just drop the act and reveal your true colors, Natalie? There's no use pretending anymore. Everything is crystal clear. Take a good look around you and see if there's anyone left by your side. So, where are your husband, daughter, 
and sister at this moment. Can you seem to spot them anywhere? Huh? What do you mean? They're probably just caught up doing something outside in the front yard. They'll be back in a hot minute or two, no worries. Nah, you've got it all wrong. No one's coming back and you're gonna be left all by your lonesome. What? Why? Did I do something wrong? I know you're just trying to scare me, right? Stop that! You know it's not working. Seriously? You're still asking that question? Are you really that clueless? Or are you just pretending to be innocent while hiding your true wicked self? Listen up, I'll break it down for you. Your daughter happened to eavesdrop on your horrifying chat with your friend over the phone and she's fully aware of your evil plot. You were planning to expose Isabel to something that triggers her asthma and then sneakily swipe her inhaler from her bag, right? So, that's why you were so insistent on inviting me for dinner, huh? It was all part of your plan to pull this sneaky trick on my daughter. How could you even contemplate such a twisted skim? Are you even human anymore? What? What are you blabbering about? I have no clue about the imaginary plan you just cooked up, so cut it out with your accusations. Oh, hold up a sec. I get it now. Are you trying to frame your own mother-in-law? <gasps> Such a despicable move of yours. Seems like you're dead set on getting rid of me, huh? Well, don't get too full of yourself. I'm not that easily shaken off. If you're gonna keep up this act of defending yourself and pretending to be all innocent, I suggest you save your breath. Seriously, guess what? I have got some pretty solid evidence in my possession. It's a tape recording of the conversation between you and your friend. Do you have an idea what I can do with that? I can hand it over to the police and accuse you of conspiring to harm an innocent child. And guess where you'll end up? Yup, behind bars. Well, what? You own a tape recording of my conversation? How could it be? I can't believe it. Give it to me, you insolent little worm. How dare you try to manipulate me, your dear mother-in-law like that. Do you really think so little of me? You're a complete embarrassment to this family, Whitney. You heard me loud and clear. It's absolutely true that I have the tape recording of that conversation where you spilled the beans about your wicked skim to harm my daughter. And guess what? Louisa herself handed it over to me. But wait, there's more. Louisa has already told the other family members too. And let me tell you, they're absolutely disgusted by what you're planning to do to your own granddaughter. So, no point in denying it anymore, Natalie. Just come clean and tell me the honest truth. Maybe then I'll think about not reporting you to the police. Think about it. It's your only chance to avoid going to prison. Seriously, are you really not going to report me to the police? Ugh, if that's the deal then, I guess I'll tell you the honest truth. Yeah, it's true that I actually wanted to hurt Isabel. You know why? Because I can't stand that ailing little girl, that's why. So you're telling me you're ready to go through all sorts of hassle just to mess with my daughter because you can't stand her? That's messed up! What kind of twisted logic is that? Yeah, you got it right. I can't stand your daughter Isabel. I never considered her a real part of our family and I never will. She's been a total pain in the neck for ages and her asthma just adds on to the embarrassment. Whenever someone brings her up, I feel so awkward, you know? Why though? I seriously don't get it. What's the big deal about Isabel having asthma? And why do you dislike her so much? Ugh, come on. Everything is messed up because of your daughter, can't you see? Did you know what your father-in-law and I used to do before retiring? We were freaking proud professional athletes. We competed all across the globe and have a massive collection of medals in every flavor. Even our daughter is a successful international athlete with a bunch of achievements under her belt. Do you know what that means? It means our grandkids are expected to carry on the family legacy and make us proud. But how can we be proud of your sick daughter is still part of her family? What's the point of her even existing if she's just gonna drag us down, you know? What? Just because you were hotshot athletes doesn't mean your grandkids are obligated to follow suit. That's seriously the most absurd reason I've ever come across. Yeah, maybe it sounds ridiculous to you and your hubby who's about as exciting as a wet noodle soup, but it ain't the case for me and my man. I should have known better. I should have pushed Chris to chase his dreams in athletics instead of going to college. He had so much potential as a star athlete and a bright future ahead of him. But what did he do? He went and became a total nerd, opting for some boring office job like a regular old office clerk. It's such a freaking disgrace. 
I should have cut my ties with that wimp ages ago. He doesn't deserve to be a part of this family tree, I tell you. Wait up. Do you even realize that Chris ain't just some average Joe office clerk? He's actually holding a major position in his company. He's the chief operating officer, and he's actually earning a great income with his job. I couldn't care less, seriously. Chris is a nerd and a wimp, just like his useless daughter, Isabel. And you know what? Most of my buddies happen to be famous athletes just like me. They completely look down on me because I have a grandkid with asthma. They even purposely exclude me from stuff. Can you even grasp how serious this is? Your daughter is straight up tarnishing my family's reputation and I can't deal with it anymore. I've had my fill. Seriously? Is your precious family image and reputation really more important to you than your own flesh and blood? And do you honestly believe that kicking your own granddaughter to the curb would magically fix everything for your precious reputation? I have to say, Natalie, I'm utterly disgusted by you and I'm pretty sure your whole family feels the same way. What are you talking about? Why would my family hate me? Stop making up wild claims like that. You haven't heard? Your husband is actually in the middle of divorcing you. And that's not all. Luisa and Antonio are packing their bags and moving out of the house too. No way. Are you kidding me? So you're telling me that both my daughter and husband are bailing on me? What on earth is going through their heads? This is totally messed up. I mean, seriously, what did I even do to deserve this? All I ever wanted was to protect my family from the embarrassment caused by your daughter. I know they despise your daughter just like I do. Well, tough luck for you. Because it turns out they don't share your mindset at all. In fact, they adore Isabel more than anything in this world. Louisa even got real mad when she found out you took her son without permission and didn't bother showing off for my daughter's birthday party. She's always had a hunch that you ain't too fond of my girl. So she found it mighty suspicious when you were all eager to invite me for family's Christmas dinner. She started keeping a close eye on you, watching your every move, and guess what? She eventually uncovered your true motive behind all of this. No, no, no. I absolutely refuse to buy into this. I don't deserve to be stabbed in the back by my own family. I'm telling you, I'm 100% innocent. This has to be some massive misunderstanding. There's just no way my own family would do a complete 180 on me like that. No freaking way. Do you even realize how much your own family despises you for your prejudice against my daughter? And that's not all. You actually skimped to harm my innocent girl, which is downright despicable and evil. Well, let me tell you something. I'm gonna take legal action and sue you for conspiring to harm a child. You're gonna pay for your actions, and I bet you'll be spending some quality time behind bars. You're saying I'm gonna end up in jail? How did things take such a crazy turn for me? You promised that if I spilled the truth, you wouldn't go running to the cops. You can't just flip the script on me like that. You have to stick to your word. Oh, so you actually think I'm gonna keep my word to a deceitful snake like you? Not a chance! Anyone who's willing to harm their own flesh and blood just to maintain their reputation deserves nothing but a cozy spot in prison. Now it's time for you to face the music and deal with the consequences of your despicable actions. Brace yourself, because justice is coming for you! In the end, Natalie was found guilty as charged and ended up behind bars. As if that wasn't enough, she received another blow when her husband decided to divorce her. He went ahead and sold the house, splitting the proceeds between them. To add to her misery, her own daughter and I decided to obtain a restraining order against her. Once she got out of prison, she desperately used up every penny she received from the divorce to hire a top-notch lawyer, hoping to fight for her right to see her grandson Antonio. But no matter how hard she tried, all her attempts fell flat on her face. The court still saw her as a potential threat to her own grandkids. Meanwhile, Isabel, despite her illness, continued to thrive. She achieved great things at school and even received a scholarship for her outstanding academic performance. I made a vow to always protect my daughter, no matter what obstacles come our way.